Hi folks, welcome back, and as always, thanks for joining. So today, we're going to do something more with casein, and I'm going to uh, make waterproof glue. Now, waterproof glue made from casein, the protein casein, it's not new. It's been used in the shipping industry for hundreds of years. Um, since the uh, introduction of plywood, it has also been used as the glue that laminates the plywood together to make uh, weather-resistant plywood. Now, the formulas that we're going to go over, I'm going to put a link to a book in the comments below where you can go and you can uh, explore this and hundreds of other applications of casein for yourself. Now the formula that we're going to use is very similar to something I've already done and that is when I made milk paint. Now if you'll recall milk paint has been used for a long time as well. Uh, they've discovered uh, paint made with casein on the walls in the pyramids. So to give you an indication of how long this has been around. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dissolve the casein but we're going to use borax as the alkali solution that's going to dissolve the casein into the polymer chains that makes plastic. Then we're going to make it into a waterproof formula with the addition of urea. Okay? So, let's get started. As I was setting up for this segment of the video, it occurred to me that uh, these two components here, this is borax and this is urea, and these components are regularly used in the wood industry as a fire retardant. Um, now, I have a lot of experience in fire retardants, working as a scientist in the candle industry, specifically candle wicks. Um, so I'm making a mental note to uh, add a series of videos in the future uh, teaching you more on uh, fire retardants and fire retardant compounds. Uh, this type of um, fire retardant used on wood would develop what's called a char and um, which acts as a barrier to fire once it forms a carbon layer the uh, fire would have a more difficult time going deeper into the wood. So borax and urea actually lower the decomposition point of wood to the point where it chars very quickly, forms a carbon shell. This is simply a side note. Uh, this is used commonly in the wood industry. Now, it makes sense to me now that I think about it when they add the casein to this this makes a sticky adhesive used as a fireproof waterproof adhesive used on wood so let's continue all right so in the book and it's uh, it's over a hundred years old uh, well pretty close to that everything is given in parts and measured by weight. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to weigh the water and the uh, formula that they give are 100 parts water. So I'm going to weigh out 100 grams. And see how much I have at that point. Volume wise. The scale sometimes has a hard time making up my mind. There we are. Let's tear this. And it calls for 10 parts borax. 
So we are going to do 10 grams of borax. Well, that was luck. <clears throat> All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to combine just these two ingredients and the book says to mix them for 10 minutes. So we're going to slide our little mixer over here and I'm going to get started and show you. And then I'm going to stop the video for 10 minutes. There we are. We'll be back. All right, so now let's add the, um, the urea. And we're going to add eight parts of urea. So we're going to add eight grams. In the book it said that the uh, urea binds with the casein to make it waterproof. So I'm going to put the uh, urea into solution first before I add the casein so that it's present. Now I'm going to give this about another four to five minutes to stir. So I'll come back once again. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the 10 grams of uh, casein. And I'm going to sift this in. Um, casein does like to clump once it hits water. And I'm sure even the sifting is not going to help that much. But it does somewhat. Now after we do this, uh, we're going to need to let this uh, stir for a long time. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple of hours <clears throat> to go into solution. To get out the clumps. <clears throat> now two hours should help everything uh, And there you have it. <laughs> it's going to take a couple hours. So I'll be back. All right, so while we're waiting for this to, uh, to mix, um, I wanted to uh, take a moment and uh, just go over a couple of things. Uh, you may have noticed uh, my little temperature probe here. One of the things that I do as I'm conducting my experiments is I gather uh, any data that I possibly can related to the environment and the conditions that I'm making these experiments in. One of them is the temperature of the water or the solution that I'm working in. Another is the relative humidity. Uh, and I record this information in a notebook. This is a lab notebook and I suggest that you do the same thing. You always want to make notes of your trials and uh, just include any information that you think or any information that you can think of that you can record. Um, this will help you uh, should you choose to reproduce this. If something goes wrong, well at least you have additional data to refer to to see if something has changed. Now also, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a couple of other mixtures to demonstrate the effectiveness of the waterproofing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another batch with the casein and the borax in the same ratios that I've already done. But I use ammonia quite a bit when I dissolve my casein. So I'm going to make uh, a trial of that as well. And I'm going to let all of this dry and then we're going to come back and I'm going to get these wet, these three types a formulation is wet with just plain old water. I spritz some on and you'll see a dramatic change with the uh, casein that has been dissolved in ammonia. We're going to see how it works 
with the borax and then we're going to use and test our uh, waterproof formula okay so it's going to be a few hours it's starting to get dark here so uh, keep on keeping on I'll be back all right so the f second formula that I'm going to do now is the one where I uh, dissolved the casein in ammonia now the table is getting a little bit busy which is perhaps another reason why you want to keep good notes First, I'm going to uh, measure out 100 milliliters of ammonia. Now, I know we're switching uh, measurements up, but uh, I don't use everything by weight. So there's 50. To that, I'm going to add <clears throat> 10 grams of casein. I seem to have forgotten to sift it in, but uh, as you saw, uh, it uh, doesn't help much. But we're going to let this also stir for a couple of hours. And I'm going to close now and uh, set up for the third formula. All right, and for the third formula, we're going to go back to using weights as a direct comparison to the first formula. So that there are no changes, and we introduce as few variables as possible. So it's going to be 100 grams of water. And to the water, we're going to add 10 grams of borax. Now, the borax serves the same purpose as the ammonia in that it is the alkali that dissolves the casein. So there we have that. Now I don't have a third stirring hot plate, 
So I am going to be the mixer for the next 10 minutes. And then I will get back to you and we're going to add the casein. And, and I'm going to continue mixing it only this time. I'm going to put it on a blender during the time that it takes for the clumps to dissolve. So after 10 minutes of hand mixing, I'm going to add the uh, 10 grams of the casein. And I am going to put it on the mixer until it has also dissolved with no lumps. So many buttons. Okay. And we'll be back once everything is mixed up. All right, here we are. So we've mixed these for a couple of hours. And I've marked each container as to what it contains. And I've transferred the, uh, the markings to a piece of tape on these plates. And we're going to pour this out. And then we're going to let these dry. Once they're dry, we're going to come back and we're going to see, uh, most importantly, is this formula right here, is it truly waterproof? This formula right here definitely is not. Uh, it's actually what got me on the trail of finding a solution for waterproofing this and I've discovered this. This formula right here is simply the uh, the borax and the casein. We just want to compare this to this and see the effectiveness of the urea. Uh, is this waterproof? We don't know that yet. So, But we're going to pour these out now. I'm taking these off now uh, all at once because I want to make another note with you and that is the color and the uh, visual appearance of these different formulas. The one that has the water, the borax and the casein only is a uh, rather viscous white and it has a lot of foam to it. The one with where the uh, it's just ammonia and casein is the what I'm used to looking at, and that is a yellowish solution, uh, not much viscosity to it, with a little bit of foam. This particular one right here is of great interest. This also has a yellowish tint to it, and it has a uh, a bit of foam to it, much light much more light than this. This has a dense foam and this has a very loose foam. So we're going to pour these out. This, uh, that poured rather like syrup. <clears throat> a thick syrup. And it has a lot of foam to it. Now the foam we're going to disregard because it's really not the point to this video. We're, we want to see if we can make a waterproof adhesive. And here is the, um, the one that I use often. It still has a lot of lumps to it. And again, we're going to disregard that because I know that it is not waterproof. And we're going to let this dry uh, as well. This is the goal right here. Is this formula right here something that is waterproof. It still has a little, what I can see is a little bit of lump. Now if we were to begin manufacturing this or making it for ourselves, we would certainly want to continue mixing until there are no lumps. 
Now we can also strain this, and I've done this when I've made the milk pint where I strained it through a t-shirt. Okay, we're going to close here, and we're going to be back once these formulas have completely dried, and we're going to attack them with water. See you soon. Alrighty, folks, so it's the next day now, and uh, these samples that I have poured have dried. So now we're going to attack them with some water and see how they hold up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour water on the uh, the casein that was dissolved in ammonia first. The, the reaction or the disintegration in water is very swift. So uh, I want to show you that first. So as you can see, uh, predictably, the casein uh, when dissolved in ammonia dries clear. When I add water to it, it will very quickly uh, become a milky white. We're going to just dump a good amount on there. Now this may take a few moments, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this to the other ones as well. And uh, we're going to come back uh, and examine it once uh, things have begun to uh, occur. I do believe that's plenty. Now, uh, before it gets away from me, uh, I want to discuss the uh, the uh, appearance of these samples a little bit, uh, just so you know where we're heading. Uh, this is clear. Uh, it's dry. It's it's rather stiff. There is some flexibility to it, but if you flex it too much, it will snap. Uh, this right here is also it's very hard it is also cracked during the drying process now that is typically due to to water evaporating uh, many things will just crack like that huh? so, but it is hard and uh, it's foamy here and as it uh, ran off from underneath it's more clear here and what I saw upon close inspection were the borax crystals. Now, I don't know if you know, but uh, borax is a, it is a salt, and uh, when it dries, it can dry like clear crystals. Okay, the same thing was here. It's hard. Now, the crystal formation was not as pronounced in this, and I'm thinking that the, uh, the urea had a lot to do with that. But it is hard, and we're going to see uh, it's stuck to the plate very well. We're going to see if anything changes with these samples right here. Now, as you can see, just for the short time that I've been talking, the, uh, the casein has fallen into the water. It was sticking up about an inch before, and now it is almost in the water. It is soft, and it's just a right now it's just it's turning into a clear jelly goop so that's what's going on there this also is exhibiting uh, it's turning into a white gel goop okay you see that it's just completely disintegrating okay so let's see what's going on with the one who, that is supposed to be waterproof Okay, it's had just about as much time, and it is still intact, completely intact. I can't, I can't budge it. So let's go over this again. Okay, so this is just a white goopy now. You see this? So, it's just soft, breaking apart in my hands, and that's 
the reason why I began looking for a solution to uh, help case it hold up in water. Uh, the same thing here. Okay, now this was ammonia and casein. This was water with borax and casein. Now, borax does dissolve casein, but it doesn't have anything to protect it from water. With the addition of the urea, this is water, borax, urea, and casein. And with the addition of that, we have a substance that is now insoluble. So, a success. So, there we have it. Now, I'm still mixing these because what I'd like to do now is I'm going to continue and I'm going to run these experiments again. And you should too. I'm going to do this same thing with this mix right here. Now, these mixtures will hold for a week. That's not a problem. All right then. There you have it. A waterproof adhesive made from milk. Thanks for watching, and if you like this channel and what we're doing here, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.